Hey folks, how's it going? Welcome back to another adventure in the kitchen. A lot of these videos I actually don't do in the garage anymore because it's too cold. taking a look at my buddy's fluke automotive 78 this thing is old it's from the late 1900s 98 i believe it's a discontinued product but the really cool thing is fluke on their website offers full support for it with the schematic and layout your bomb everything that you would need to test and repair this meter i am by no means a component level repair specialist it's something i'm just diving into so i'm really new to it but i always like trying out new things because i'm gonna learn something along the way it's already broken so hopefully i just don't break it anymore and i can only make it a little bit better i'll take you through the basic troubleshooting the way that i kind of just went about it for a first time component level repair i got pretty lucky obviously the first thing i checked was just the fuse it's a buddy of mine that's a fellow mechanic he doesn't really do a lot of electrical work he just does some some really basic measurements here and there all i was told was it doesn't work and he gave it to me in a bag with screws and said hey do you just mind taking a look at it let's go ahead and take a look at the repair process after doing some basic testing with the meter, I found that it wasn't reading any voltages. That was kind of my first indication of, okay, volts ohms and COM port are most likely some kind of fault is going on there. Now, Fluke has done a really great job. Wish they were a sponsor. They still support this product. They give a full schematic, bill of materials. You can see all of your parts laid out here. And that was super helpful for trying to get the right part, but just go ahead and looking at the circuit, I just started with volts ohms and started testing down the line. Luckily, it came back pretty easy. This resistor here originally lived where this one is now. This one was just put in for some really light testing to verify that after the resistor had been replaced, it would read voltages. But I just went through with my meter and was checking for continuity resistance levels and then comparing them based off of what their values were supposed to be. So that's coming in at one mega ohm, that resistor. And we can see on our schematic, that is R2, one mega ohm, two watt. For me, when I'm doing this stuff, I really like to print out my schematics and highlight them. I like to hold them in my hand. I think it's a lot easier to manage when you're troubleshooting rather as opposed to like a digital schematic. I like to print them out, use a highlighter, trace my circuit where power is coming from and going to. And then during my testing, I just found I got real, I felt like I got really lucky, but here on R1, the resistor came back open instead of being 2K ohms. So I just threw in a 2k ohm resistor it's not rated for the proper wattage and that's why it's way smaller so i just did some light testing because i didn't want to accidentally let too much current pass through the rest of the meter and accidentally damage something else that was kind of the mindset if you do have an older fluke meter like this that you're looking to repair go on their site they should have a schematic the thing that i did run into as we can see on our bomb are one resistor one on our bomb it's a 2k plus or minus five percent two and a half watt and they do supply a part number a fluke part number but this resistor is has been discontinued so i got the closest thing that i could and what would you want to look for when doing something like that well you're going to want to meet the minimum wattage so it needs to be at least two and a half watts, but the value and the accuracy need to be the same. It needs to be 2K ohms at plus or minus 5%. And this is the closest that I could get. And if you are having the same exact issue with your Fluke 78, that is the part number for it. It's a three watt resistor, so it's a little bit beefier. My opinion, it's an upgrade. I'm not too worried about the fit because luckily we still have a lot of open space here. So let's go ahead and solder on our new new resistor. We'll check current, voltage, ohm, and diodes. And I think as long as those come back good, then I can give it back to them and everything will be right as rain. This is our test resistor and I'm just going to be pulling out. I have almost no experience doing this, so...
We're gonna go ahead and set it through just a couple basic checks. What are we gonna do? Volts, resistance, diode, continuity, and resistance. I know the screen is going out a little bit on this thing. First setting is volts AC. Let's see, it has the ability to zero itself out, if you can see that. Let's go ahead and take an AC voltage measurement. Beautiful, 14.3. Let's go ahead and do a DC measurement. That's what he'll most likely be using this for. Great, we're getting that 12 volts like we had before. Let's see if continuity and resistance, how that's working out. I think we have to hit this selection to get a tone. Okay, resistance is not working. So we must have another issue within the circuit. Well, that's kind of a bummer. Okay, resistance doesn't work. Hmm. Diode's not gonna work. Let's see if current will work. So current works great. That is a two amp bulb. So then we're really on the hunt for diodes and resistance. RPM and dwell. I don't have a way to test those. This would be, I do have a way to test. We can do Hertz. Oh, I need to hold it for two seconds. One, two. Okay, that's how we get into Hertz. Okay, Hertz is working, voltage is working, volts DC we know is working. I don't have anything to pulse with modulate. Let's see if continuity though. One, two. So it's always ringing. So that's kind of a clue into troubleshooting. There must be another short somewhere or a short somewhere as opposed to before we had an open and that's why we couldn't get anything to work. And now we have a short, it's reading somewhere internally. Hey, there's, you know, it's saying negative kilo ohms, but huh. Okay, well, that's pretty interesting. We have more testing to do. We're not quite done with this meter yet. If you're missing your voltage readings, check that resistor for an open. That could just be your culprit. There you have it. I've gotten at least one step closer to getting this meter to actually work all the way. We can read AC voltage and Hertz. We can do volts DC, DC current. I didn't try doing AC current. I have to look into that, but our biggest problem right now is our ohms and continuity setting are still not working. So I think there's gonna be some further testing and digging into this, and hopefully we can get this thing completely working and good to go. I don't know if it has any sentimental value to them. Thank you so much for joining me this time. I hope you like the new format. I'll catch you on the next one.